So, after a year of trying to kill myself, I didn't think that flying to Ireland would be the thing that maybe completed the job. I had spent most of my sophomore year in college having a sort of Dread Pirate Roberts conversation with myself every night that went a little bit like, good night, Cooper, good work, I'll most likely kill you in the morning. And I never did get around to that as I'm still standing in front of you. But it was a bad year. And I graduated that, or I returned to Colorado that summer, and I spent a lot of it in therapy. I had a bad breakup, and I did eventually get the note from my therapist that convinced my college to let me go on a term abroad to Ireland. And I flew thousands of miles from Denver to Ireland, and I landed in Galway. And it was amazing. I knew no one where I was. All the people on my student trip with me were not friends of mine. I was alone. I was living by myself. I had my own room for the first time in really ever. And I was alone, and I was healing, and it was great. And what made it even better is that I had very little money, but I was the only person in our student group that was interested in traditional Irish music, and we were writing a student's guide to Galway City, and the university suggested that they would offer, that they would reimburse my bar tabs if I would go out and write about music. So I was drinking for credit, as my mother would put it, and it was fundamentally amazing. And I spent a lot of that semester each night at a pub, at a bar, listening to amazing music and writing about it, and then having my bar tabs reimbursed. And it was, it was lovely. And Ireland is this place, though, that I'm pretty much everybody that I met there could call where you were from in Ireland down to county at least, if not parish, if not street. And if you were American, there was one question anybody asked you, which was, so you're American, right? You're American, like from America. So football, not, not, not real football, but like American football. What's with the Pats? The Irish condescend to play rugby. And I was asked over and over and over, what's with the Pats? And I don't have an answer. And I eventually began to pigeon this accent. I, I picked up a little bit here and there, and I had a sort of generic southwestern Irish accent. I was always from Cork or Kerry or somewhere that wasn't Galway. And in Ireland in 2001, the specter of the trouble still really hung over the country, that the Republic of Ireland is 90% Catholic and 10% other. And Galway is a very solidly Republican Catholic place. Belfast is not to be spoken of and Protestants don't talk about it. And all of this came to a head one night that I was on my way home from a pub, and there's an alley that cuts a big curve off my walk, and I was maybe a few sheets to the wind, but the people in front of me were under full sail. There was a couple, and they were, they were taking up the whole alleyway, and I sort of tried to get around them, and I tried to get around them, and the guy, he caught me out of the corner of his eye, and he said, I I'm sorry, and I said, no, it's all right. And he turned to me at 11 o'clock at night in Galway, Ireland, and looked me dead in the eyes and said, are you from Belfast? And I was certain I was about to be murdered. I was certain that I was about to become a statistic American tourist killed in alley over misunderstanding and accent. And I tried to get my Yankee on. I began to back up and say, no, I'm an American, and I'm sorry I've been picking up the accent. And he came after me, and I watched his eyes and the wheels in his head begin to turn, and he stopped, and he said, no, I'm sorry. I'm from Belfast. I thought you were too. And it gets more surreal. Because the woman with him turns around, and it's my housemate, Tess, who had hair down to her waist that she'd cut that day, and I hadn't recognized her from behind. And there is an unspoken law in Ireland that if you meet friends before closing time, you are legally obliged to go to a bar and buy more booze to contribute to the local economy. So we did. And we stopped off at the pub closest to our house, and they bought me a drink, and my nerves began to calm down. And I got a conversation which I have never heard before or since, which is what it means to be a Protestant in the Republic of Ireland. This young man, who I learned would be sleeping on our couch, had been living in Ireland originally from Belfast. Tess was an English girl who'd been there for seven years, and I heard what it meant to be Protestant in a 90% Catholic country. And then when Tess got up and went to use the bathroom, he picked up my hand, and I cannot to this day tell you his name, but I can tell you what he said next. He looked at my palm, and he began to read my palm, and he said, you've been going through some really intense shit, but it's going to be okay. And the next morning, I was making breakfast, and the two of them stumbled down from upstairs, and they both looked at me, and almost together they said, did we bump into you last night? <laughs> I swear. And all I could say was, yeah, yeah, you did. Thank you.